I can share what I have, but <laughs> it's in the same, I, I forget who was talking about, I looked up the same speech, and then I ended up remembering that there's an Elizabeth Paratrovich rap that is also on the Gumboots Go or Go Gumboots video and um, maybe I could start there. So is that okay, Hune? It's not, it's still not in sentence. It's so, I mean, it's my attempt. Okay. Uh, <laughs> gonna cheese for your support. Okay. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Uh, all right. Eliz Elizabeth Paratrovich Achie. I realize I should have her Tlingit name. Tlingit Shia Awudenei. Elizabeth, you do a sock. Ka Awashii, Roy, you do a sock. Santa Kihini, Kayu, Sadak. Ta, ta. Kaya nail su akawa ak akawa ak a kuge kugei ko u a yuhas yuhas ausaka click and that's where I stopped. I did some more translation, but. Okay. <laughs> Hune, can I ask? Well, I I think you talked about this. Like tried to buy, you, you mentioned how to handle two verbs. Mm -hmm. How am I even close here? Or well, let me. Uh, I'll grab the screen share from you. Okay. And then we'll look at. Um... So if we. The first one, so like to tie two verbs together. Wuch kagach to do aya dach ayuch tank. So like, let's just look up the one for try. And uh, we're going to go for this one to try it. Uh, there is one, let's see. Well, okay, what is this? Really, this is one. 
So we get uh, I am trying it. They are trying it. Uh, and then we're going to look for the perfective, right? So with this one, it gives us and although we are going to reach a point where once we see this, we're going to be able to change that for any person. So we'll be able to say, once we see akawa'ak, we're going to note the stem variation, and then it's a, it's a perfective. So then we'll be able to go kahwa'ak, kautua'ak, kia'ak, kayi'ak, akawa'ak, hasakawa'ak, kautua'ak. Those are all the subject possibilities. But for now, we bring this, I bring this up because once we see this, we put a hus in front of it. Now we've got they, plural, tried. And what did they try to do? They tried to buy a house. So we're going to scroll down to ooh and go find that verb. So for trying to do, tried to do something, I would put the trying verb first. And then the second one, so we'll see by, and we're going to get uh, this one. And what we're going to look for here is the negative perfective. And there's, there's kind of a fun pattern here, but for now, just look up the negative perfective, and then you'll put a suffix on it. And the suffix is what we call, it's a relational suffix. Uh, it's the same one that you would put on a dependent verb. So this verb depends on the other verb. In this case, I would say, and then you just forget the tleil part. Has akawa ak hit has awa u. So then you would put w on the end of that. And then that's how you get they tried to buy a house. Uh, and that's just really kind of just two perfectives being linked together. But that works for, you know, so there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff you could do. So uh, for, and then, you know, we see this in other forms with like yake, but if we said ikhsatini, yake ikhsatini, so we go to look up teen, and then we go down to this one with the S classifier. And we see here, khwasatin. So that's the negative perfective. But if I put i on there, this a gets knocked out. So then we say, yake ikhsatini. But we could follow, we could say, yake iutusatini. It's good that we see you. Right? And so, and it, it could go on and on, right? Uh, I don't want you to see me for whatever reason. Like maybe I'm a burglar or something. I don't know. But that's basically the formula is the same. First verb, uh, it can go imperfective or perfective. Then the second verb, for now, I would start with looking up the negative perfective and then putting the suffix on there. So that really, as you're putting these together, you're not really crunching the rules too hard in your brain, you're just sort of saying, okay, here's the shortcut. I can look up that name. And then you can have tuwasagu and kesh tuwa'ushku. You could use those very well. So like, we could look up the verb. Uh, so someone shows me a picture of some delicious naidi and some potatoes or something. And I could look up the verb for kha, to eat. And then it's going to be with it's an object, because I'm talking about a specific thing. So then I could look up this. But this has a short, uh, sorry, let me zoom in. This has a short high vowel at the end. Oops. So that means it's going to have to go long and low once we put a suffix on it. Because it just follows these same rules like we learned with the possessive suffix. Uh, so, it, so you could have that as well. Do tawasagu awakhayi. They want to eat it. Okay, okay. How, how do you know what suffix to put on? 
Uh, it's going to follow the same rules as the possessive suffix. So this, so this ends, it's going to be an I, but if it ends with a vowel, it'll be a YI. And if it's rounded, which means it ends with uh, a W or the OO vowel, uh, you're going to put U or WU on it. The tone will be the opposite of whatever is before it, but when you put things on a short high vowel, it pushes that vowel long and low, which means the suffix ends up short, it ends up high. I'm going to teach. I, I did try to find government. I couldn't find the word for government. But I wanted to say because I saw on Facebook uh, discrimination. I think you put people who don't. I wrote it here. Uh, uh, people who don't hate people. Is, was that it? Don't hate different people. But uh, to, to our dismay, um, the stickers were already printing when Hune texted me to uh, correct my spelling. <laughs> so the underline of the K should be like the last one, and Gook should also be underlined. So. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, like. Uh, and as we get into our uh, they were fighting against a lot of racism. And that's actually a really hard thing to talk about. But I heard uh, Shukshani Marge Dudson talk about, she'd just say, Some of the white people really hated us. And then you could say, uh, or there's ways you could tie those concepts together. So you say, ahu a, which would be some of them. Um, let me put this in the chat. Oops, I got my caps on. So ahu a is some of them. Or maybe I'll make a document, and this will be actually a little easier for me. I got to make it easy for myself. Hold on. Forgot I started a notes document for our class. I'll just add to that. Oh, maybe I don't have it. Achadi. Okay, fine. I'll do my best. Okay. Are you looking for the slogan? Uh, no, I'm just uh, I'm trying to walk through a couple of concepts here. Oh, whoops. But I wasn't. I wasn't ready. Uh, okay, so here's just like a blank document just to walk us through some ideas. So one is uh, this verb. I'll just copy it from right from the verb database. So we'll throw verb root on there. We'll tell it to stop checking our spelling. So this is uh, the verb to hate. Uh, so this is going to be sort of our base. Let me get rid of that. So it is an SH classifier. It's a G state verb. Uh, so there's a couple things. One, again, if we just sort of grab a third person out of here, uh, and I'm going to change this to they hate them or it. And so here is the verb. And, and this is going to be one that I think we use to talk about racism and just how it functions and sort of what it what it is. Uh, when I explain it to my kids, th these are some things that I would say. And so I would say, ah, ah. And this is a good thing to learn how to use. It means some of them, right? And so this could come before or after. Uh, in terms of how I talked about this stuff with, with my kids, sometimes I would say some of the white people. And then I would say, there's some word order things that are really interesting here. We were doing this stuff in advanced Tlingit last night. So if you're going to say, we have an object and a subject. 
So if we're going to say they hate us, uh, and it's, it's not a very pleasant verb to work with, but what are we going to be looking to do here? They hate us. Any ideas? And it's going to be a plural. So they, they all, they all hate us. But we've already said some of them, so we're not saying all of them. We've already sort of established that. But in the verb itself, they plural hate us. Where is the us part going to be? In the front of the verb. The very first. Yeah, it's right here. So we'll we'll kind of put that in. So there's the chut. So right. So there's the oops, ha. Sorry. So here's us. We're in there. What what's can what's the subject going to be? They us. Yeah. So the well the subject is going to be a third person. And how do we mark the third person in a verb for the subject? It is always a zero or no. Nothing, right? So there's nothing. But to pluralize this, we have to have hus. And hus always comes before any object. There's no object that could jump in front of hus. So the hus comes first. Hus ha, hus chet, hus yi, hus i, any of that. And then it, it's linked to this third person. So then these are kind of sitting outside of the, the verb itself. They are part of the verb phrase, but they're separate words. Hus, ha, and then this shows us. So there, this part won't change. So this shik on won't change. You can't really knock that letter I out of there, and the stem variation will stay the same because it's still in the imperfective. So then we should have sh on. So that's what this would look like when you put it together. But this is sort of a first person, so if if I wasn't Tlingit and I was talking about this, I might say, Has a shikan ahu a we late ha. And there's some things that we might do. Like, if I were to put this sentence together, I would put this first, and then there is a word order thing which is really interesting in Tlingit, because we know it goes object first, then subject in the verb. But if you're making a whole sentence, the kind of most natural way is to name the subject who is doing it, not as part of the verb, but just to name it outside of the verb. Then you move into the verb itself, and then you push, then you have the object listed there. So it gets a little complicated with third person. But if we said, if I said, wait, wait, if I heard someone say that, I would interpret that as some of the Tlingit, or the Tlingit hate some of the white people. Uh, again, not the most pleasant phrases to sort of adjust, but just when we're talking about discrimination, these are some of the bases of it, right? And then the, the other thing that we were sort of talking about is this, which means a different one, some other one. And so I would put this in there, a different person. So usually if I'm talking about this as a concept, I'm saying something like this, um, or you might say ashakan. Let's just keep it simple. So this is hating someone who's different, hating a different person. Because that some of the fundamentals is sort of like just it's rooted in a lot of that stuff, and it's an ugly, complex sort of concept. 
But when I would um, talk to my kid about it, especially the oldest one when she was growing up, and when because we, we homeschooled all of our kids for a while, but that one got the most homeschooling. And I tried to explain some of this stuff, and I would say something like this. Uh, and, but I would say, they, or, they used to. Uh, and then you're just trying to frame it in terms of what kinds of things used to happen. And then I would say, uh, so they would write on a board, no, no tlingits here, because they wouldn't allow us in certain spaces. And so that's how I would talk to her about it, and it was really interesting. It was not fun, but it was fascinating to see, because... Uh, she got really angry, and she's, I think she's like well, four years old or something. She said, when I get, and she said it in English, so, but she said, when I get older, I'm going to put up signs that say, no English. And so she took out her vengeance on the English language, which was, it was interesting to me to see how she was processing this information. Hello. Hey. Hey, Satini. Kachkashat Elizabeth Parachovich dot Yucha Titla Atki that. When I was teaching high school, my class uh, was studying about her, uh, Elizabeth Parachovich's fight. And uh, they couldn't believe it about, uh, about the signs. And so. <clears throat> We were in the uh, native student uh, classroom. So they decided that uh, they would put uh, no natives allowed, uh, no Indians, and also uh, no natives, no dogs. And so they started posting it up and the students were coming in for lunch and Boy, they got so mad when they saw that. And uh, the counselors sided with us and said, you can't touch those signs, you have to leave it up. So after they finished um, uh, decorating the place with all these signs all over the room, uh, they, we had assembly for the native students and we gave out tickets raffle tickets and uh so the my students put on the story of they uh, acted out the story of elizabeth I used to, skew that to uh to the uh for the students and then uh we told them that uh we're gonna draw tickets and if your number is drawn you get to be the first one to pull down any sign you want and throw it in the trash. So then the kids got so excited. So <clears throat> we started doing the drawing and the kids could hardly wait for their turn and they were picking out signs that they wanted to grab. And uh, so that I think that really made an impression on them because it really hurt them but it made them really feel good that all the signs were finally gone and in the trash. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was a real fun activity. That, it started out kind of scary, but uh, the students thought of it and I said, okay, we'll just allow it and see how it goes. And uh, uh, it turned out to be a, a real fun activity. Goodness. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, anybody else have sentences about Elizabeth Parachovich? Uh, uh, yeah, how to go on. Um, he is clock, uh, has to in you, uh, hey, what on? Um, Kakashat Yagi, yeah, Klingit, you, Katangi, would to a hit, uh, would to hit, uh, coo at, uh, got to the two stuga hadity, um. We really tried to um, 
use language as our foundation and try to use it as much as we knew how to. Um, in front and uh, Kies Pla uh, noted that that was uh, the most uh, Tlingit Yucatangi that uh, she's ever even heard at an A and B A and S event. So we're sort of trying to um, add a little bit more every year. And, and last year I was able to do like a small introduction of just the day, um, but we're just adding more and more as we go. So yeah. Yep, gonna cheese, Uh, there, there's a really neat verb that was used I want to sort of point out. It's to put your full effort into something. Uh, and so this is a fun one to, that we sort of learned, you know, you know like so would say, Watu a hitch. Yaha yukatangi at tilayehe. We really tried to use our language. And so th these are things that you can sort of use and uh you know just to keep yourself fired up and to really sort of uh talk about these things and sometimes you might use a future you know so you could say to heach we're gonna really exert ourselves and really put full effort into this thing okay so yeah Okay, you go to Tini here, Juan. I'm trying to get a cheese, let's pass a bitch. Clean get her, Satay. You are to do dine. Who could, Han? Yan Ayer de Has do cock, Yan Aqua de Gaja Tle has do Kuda Kuda who's geet. Do ya de you hua jigit. Um, I really was like, I like what you guys brought up also about what she says on how she barked back saying, you know, 5,000 years and also appreciated her uh, shout out saying that we would, we serve with your military, myself, 30 years of the Air Force and Army and all my, both sides of my family, you know, like my Dutch grandfather was at, uh, he came to Alaska as a captain and was at the uh, excursion inlet guard for the Germans, who my grandmother's father was also a German. And all they served along with the Klingit, you know, my Chukunadi, um, uh, grandfather, he served up in, with the uh, U.S. Army uh, against the Japanese. So, you know, it's very proud. And I, uh, and I tried to figure out, uh, I salute, <laughs> so I salute her for that and um, her bringing up the fact that they are fighters at heart and they will support and they don't think twice about it. So I was very proud to read that. Yeah, a few years ago, the state of Alaska was trying to declare a state of emergency for Alaska native languages. And we had like a resolution moving through these various committees. And I was testifying on the resolution, and then I couldn't make one of the sessions. And luckily, a, a friend of mine texted me and said, uh, boy, this guy from Fairbanks is really talking against declaring a, an emergency. And so I said, uh, and I had argued with this guy before. His name was John Coghill. He was the one who tried to stop the language bill to make uh, Alaska Native Languages co-official in Alaska. So uh, we had defeated him before. So I, I told uh, my friend who was there, I said, could you please like send me a summary of every major point that he makes? And they did a wonderful job just writing down what he said. I think I was in class or in a meeting or something when, when the session was going on. So I got onto the agenda on the next session as an invited speaker, which means you theoretically have no time limit. We can't really go forever. But I, I sort of pointed out, and this is something you get from like studying Kach Rashat and the Alaska Native Sisterhood and the Alaska Native Brotherhood is you throw their words right back at them, which, you know, that quote 
uh, is throwing somebody's words right back at them, you know, about having 5,000 years of recorded civilization. Like this is what someone said to, to them to be against anti-discrimination, which means you're pro-racism. Uh, and what was crazy was a lot of the arguments at the time that Qaqashat and others were trying to counter was this idea that we should have discrimination, we should have white-only spaces because if we put the races together, there's just going to be racial tension. Like this was one of the, the crux of their argument, I think. And what was wild was this Coghill guy stood up and he says, we shouldn't make all the languages equal because we're just going to end up with more racial tension. And I thought, here we are like 80 years later and you can't think of one new thing to say. As far as, you know, just really trying to keep your sense of supremacy going. But anyway, so when I went to the session, I said, I just want to, I never named him. And I never looked at his face. But I said, I just want to counter the senator who was speaking against this. The area that you're from has one speaker of your language left. And you don't think it's an emergency? Your own constituents, your own people? You think that that's not a big deal where you come from? The people you're supposed to represent, which is all the people in your area? And then I went through and I quoted all these things that he said, that, not really quote, but just sort of outlined them and then shot them down. And so, and then it ended up passing. And he came up and he shook my hand later and he said, uh, boy, you did a good job really explaining that, but I don't really appreciate having my own words thrown back in my face. And so I said, use better words. Hataya. Oh. Mm, oops, I gotta get my, uh, I'm gonna screen share because uh, I struggle with my pronunciation so you can understand me. I tried to just take simple verbs that I, um, so I really just focus on, I'm really focusing on right now, trying to learn some verbs. Um, okay, so, Kha'in, Lakhat, Uhan, In, Akhawanik, Elizabeth, Wanamaker, Paratovich, Lihishak, Anik, Cha'agut, Ka'u, Ya'at Wune, Cha'agwat, Sa'agit, Wudzigit, Ye Yawaka, Ya'at Wune, Yan Uwahan, Elizabeth, Wanamaker, Paratovich, Klich, Awul, Khach, Adak, Kuk, Has, Tutli, no, Tutli, At, Government, Kak, Ku, Kaku, Ayawad Lak, Akya Liki, Yukatangi, Ade Yati Ye, Yan Uahan, Elizabeth Wanamaker, Pravatovich, Ye Kuanuk, Idat Ye Kutuanuk, Lishi Shak An Anik Chaagut. Ku ya at une ye dat ye kayatuka. Oh, I was, I found this verb. I was going to say a key, a key, and I was, didn't look up the word for February. So, seek to see. See, oh, seek to see. Okay. Yeah. Good sheesh. Yeah, okay. Uh, is a really neat verb because it means uh, breaking the daylight. And so it's a, like, like that's usually how we hear that, like the day broke on us again. Um, and, and then causing the day to, it's like sort of like you cause the day to come. It's pretty neat. And so, uh, yaduz, there's another one, yadudzuhih is to make a, uh, people make a, a public spectacle of it. They make it into a thing. 
So yeah, fabulous. So yeah, that would be setting aside the day. And that chach verb that, that was in that one, uh, it's, an, it's, you know, not everything is always positive all the time, but this one is probably the opposite of the hitch, you know, so that that hitch is to put your full strength into it and the chach is to just give up. <laughs> so there, there are cases where, you know, to give up hope on the thing. Uh, that's that's not really the business we're in. We're trying to stay positive and focused, but you do need to know how, and you could also say, you know, uh, this one, the L high tone I L, it's different than play, but it is probably a cousin. So instead of not, you get don't. And it's just L high tone I L. So it's shish. <laughs> but even birth speakers, I hear them sometimes trending towards tlaif. So sometimes you'll hear people say tlaif or hef, and then they'll have this, you'll hear this underlined K at the end. And those two things combine to give you the prohibitive. What comes in the middle isn't always exactly clear to me. You're typically getting... Uh, a negative imperfective or a negative repetitive imperfective, which is why you're getting um, the you in front of it. It's like saying, like, don't repeatedly do that thing. So there, there's, that's a bigger argument than what we're trying to sort of look at here. But this one, too, so you could say, like, you're trying to tell a story. And so, like, you know, I tried to do this thing, but then I gave up on it. Uh, which, you know, it's not always the worst thing. Sometimes it's just how it goes, right? It doesn't mean you gave up on everything. It just means I tried to do this thing, but then I really realized I couldn't, so I gave up on it and went to do this other thing. Or you could say, I don't want to give up on it. Hey, And uh, yeah, feel free to go on Thursday if you folks want to. No worries. We're just using this to get some stuff started and put a few things together. If anyone else wants to go tonight, Kakakwati. Katsu. Kwasa <laughs> Ratrovich pa wanamaker ku u ach in has wusat shun yi du dutch khan i yan du kelk i has ka ka du kalku has awe has cha yan ka u wadi awe ach i who did the coo? A where ha das dasa dot ye ye jewuna yin. Can cheese crane? I'm going to translate this, say this in English because this is a little different from where other people are coming from. And I, I might have known Elizabeth Karatovich, but she passed away when I was a year old. Growing up, her white surname was Wanamaker. There were Paratroviches and Wanamakers in elementary school and high school with me. They were her grandchildren, nieces, and nephews. But not until I was a grown woman of middle age did I know who she was and what she had done. And I'm not proud of that. 
Jeez. Okay, uh, hi, Yeah, well, it's not surprising either. There's so much. Like, I can still walk in. I, I just have a feeling I could walk into every, every high school classroom in Alaska and show them a picture of William Paul, and they won't, tell, they won't be able to tell me who he is. So I think the erasure is the part of the education system, which we're continually trying to, to change. Uh, one, another, sort as these sort of verbs are kind of bubbling up, uh, I want to talk about the verb to know something. So when you look these up, sometimes these verbs have a ton of information in there for you. So you have an object and a subject, an S classifier, ku. Uh, H means there's a fading stem variation in there, which only concerns you in the repetitive. And we're not doing repetitives yet, like to habitually know something or to repetitively, you know, to regularly know something. However, this is one because it's got the double O ending, it'll change to wane. So this is where you get ya nachsequain. I'm beginning to know it. Ya nisequain. You're beginning to know it. Ya anasquain, which is where ya uh, atnasquaini comes from, like getting to know things. That's what it means, and that's the word for student. Uh, then when we go down, so again, when we see this siku, it's long and high, and if we look down here, we got chasaku, yisaku, ausaku, watusaku, yisaku, hasausaku, wadudzaku. For our inland speakers, they would say amsaku and hasamsaku, but those would be the only places that change. Although quite a few older speakers from there would say ying siku, so there would be a gamma right there. But if you look at siku, so from the class of the classifier and the stem are the exact same all the way down here. It is not changing. What's changing is what goes in front of it. Hua, ye, ao, wutu, yi, hus ao and would do or would do. Uh, the fourth person, it does trigger a plus D because it's a non-zero classifier. Fourth person means it must be plus D. So we are going to learn how to do this, but to get ourselves there, we got to do a few more chapters in which I'll talk about in a little bit. But the other thing is looking at the negative. So with this one, you have Saku. So it must change to short and high. It must also change to sa. Because it's sa, there is an instance in the third person where that letter A gets knocked out of the classifier and you end up with awus. There was someone who was trying to lecture a whole bunch of people and say, he wanted to say, tleshas awusku. And I'll just say it was a bad time to be lecturing people. And at the same time, that person was saying, Kethas Ausaku. And I was saying, I'm thinking, one, this is a bad time to be chewing everyone out because someone had literally just passed away. And second, it should be Kethas Ausaku. So these are some finer details about the verb changes in the negative. But the other thing that you could do with this, just to make it one more step, just another interesting thing you could do with looking. So basically what I'm trying to show, show you folks is you can look this stuff up, then you can make a few subtle changes. And then you can learn how to, and as we start sort of going over the pattern building, we're going to try and get you off of this book. Especially this, this semester, the goal is to do a perfective without looking it up. Okay, that's your, that's your goal. If I show you the theme, it's like put that in a perfective for any given person combination and should be able to. That's a really big step is to be able to do that. It really helps you be more fluid if you can just do that without looking it up. You could put a de decessive marker on here, which would, so again, putting a suffix on a short high will push it long and low. 
but I could say kesh kwa sa ku wen. And that means I did not know that, or I used to not know that, but now I do. So it is a bit of a double negative in terms of the logic, but it's kind of a fun thing to do because you could do that going back to the hate verb. You could say they used to hate us, but you can also say they don't anymore. You could do both of those at the same time with Shinget grammar by using this decessive. Decessive uh, means it, it is that way, or I'm sorry, but it says used to, but not anymore. Just like du sagen, used to be called that, but not anymore. Okay. Can we? Oh, okay. You go first, I'll, then I have a question. So can we use that to kind of go back a little bit to that relative? Um, so if you were to say, I want to know, it would be, ach tu wa sigu so yeah, so this this part stays the same, but the the ooh it pushes it to go long and low. So you look up negative perfective, put a suff put the relative suffix on the end. They want to know it. So I was wondering about the per, the per, perfective and the imperfective on this. So the perfective is translated that, you know, it's not, I knew it, it's, I know it. Mm -hmm. and there isn't an imperfective. And I notice on some verbs, it doesn't have an imperfective. So I'm just wondering what's going on there. Okay. okay. So the verb type, will tell you also what kinds of, so for motion verbs and event verbs, you cannot have an imperfective. Like sort of like knowing something, there's no state where you are, it's like you either don't or you do. It's like this, it's, I think it just has these logical things where there's no point, you know, like you can be good, but you know, for knowing something, you either know it or you don't, right? Mm -hmm. For, for example, like, I know that information, or I don't, but you can be in the process of getting to know it, or you can be in the process of going to a place, but motion and event verbs do not have imperfectives. Good question. Rishish. Ah. Oh, Kune. Ah. Speaking of what you were just talking about, like, is there, are there words for like the most or the least, or are those also concrete? Like it either is or isn't. Well, like, you mean like more than anything or less than anything? Uh, like uh, what I wanted to say earlier with like, we found out that was the most spoken, something like that. Yeah, so you could say, when, when you start to sort of quantify something, so you could say kunach is to say really. Like, so for example, kunach ausaku ha yukatangi shaksani kik. You know, so she really knows our language, right? So someone can really know something. You could put other thing, and then you could say kach kunach, really, no, and then, um, a yanach is it goes in front of something, and that means like more than it. So you can keep sort of, I guess I got to do sort of a lesson on how to just bump those things up, because kunach is pretty common. Kachwasa, you can go in front of it, um, but then if you want to start comparing things, it gets a little bit trickier. So you could say, ach kayanach ausaku. They know more than me. Uh, or I could say, they know less than me. So you can do more than and less than. Uh, but you tend to not necessarily get like concepts like the greatest or these rankings that I think do. Those are kind of concepts in English that really work, like Tom Brady's the greatest or whatever the thing is. Like you, you tend. You could say better than everybody, but those are also usually reserved for someone who's really full of themselves. And so 
That's another uh, big question. Yeah, Ganesh Tish. Oh, yeah, we're just like, it's just like uh, in the context of the most that we've heard and not elevating like any particular person or anything. Yeah. But, yeah, Ganesh Tish. And I did think about Kunach, but I didn't know if that would apply there. So, Ganesh Tish. Yeah, well, so you could say, that, so like at, at the core, we have these terms, ya nach in kin. I, I need to go, let me, let me type these ones out. So here, this needs to, it has to have something in front of it, and then kin. So these are opposite concepts greater than, less than, right? And it could work in all kinds of ways. I, I think the moon is bigger than that, smaller than, so someone could say, uh, it's a half moon tonight. And I could say, which is, I think it's more. I think it's less. So they could work like that. Uh, and then these can also, you could say, uh, and you could say, uh, Kin. So now it's sort of compounding, and this is more than before and less than before. So you could say, We heard more Shingit than in our previous gatherings. I guess I can, I'll try. Yeah. I wonder if that's what the, those are the phrases that they use in like the math stuff. Maybe I should have looked there. Oh, maybe. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah these are greater than less than. Yeah. Okay. Yuck, hey. Anyone else have any? Or any questions? Kind of jumping through some pretty big concepts. I I do know there was one other sort of thought, and I, I just want to show you where this is uh, in case you're curious because some of you are looking into some pretty complex concepts. Uh, there is this thing called the potential, which is pretty, pretty funky. But if you see, so So there, once you learn how to do this, this one, and it, it does require quite a few things, you got to have the conjugation prefix, you got to have the irrealis, it's a plus I classifier. And it has a suffix on there, which is attributive suffix, which is exactly like the relational one, except it's always low. But this is how you could say, might do it, might not do it, can't do it, would have done it. So it, it, it's all built in this concept of a potential. And it is kind of complicated if you ever want to say can't sleep, might sleep, might not sleep, would have slept, they would all fall under this form. So once you know how to put the form together, then you could put some things around it. So gwash uchsekuu. They might, well, you'd probably say They might know it. Uh, but it is a more complicated form. But if you're looking to try and put some of those things together, this came about because someone wanted to say, like, I might have known them. Or I would have known them. Right? I would have eaten it, but I got there late. But those are complicated grammatical concepts that are, they come down to this, what we call a potential form, which is one of the later ones that we teach. We do that usually in advance. But if you're ever trying to, you know, so if, even though we're doing intermediate tlingit, there's so much to the language that we really try to stick to the basics. So instead of translating the speech, maybe we just come up with five sentences about a person. And, and you know, it can be frustrating because it's like we want to play lead guitar, but we're still learning how to play some basic chords. And so we got to just pull it back sometime. 
that's uh, the idea of potential. I was just noticing that when it was an end statement, it was long, it was short and low. And mm -hmm. then like it was potential, it went high. So then that one has both just seeing it. Yeah, right. And so there's there's quite a few, like I would say, look it up for now. But if if you see this underline X, you could change that to a KA. And that's how you say, I would have known. So you can you can learn how to do that stuff too. But that's that's getting into the unlocking the upper upper levels of the those are your cheat codes for the defeat the big bosses. Okay. And Kilchish for the share about the. Uh, Jim Thorpe, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, the idea is too, just on, you know, so, so some of the good and the bad, you know, the family was always respected our native side too. And that some of the stories that when they go somewhere and won't be served food, you know, it's just, it's just heart wrenching. And then there's always good and everything when you look. And I thought I'd just share that too. It was just very, ama very amazing to me because then my grandfather went on to be an anthropologist, his, his son, so. You know, there's a lot of respect there, but it wasn't across the board, you know, like some of the family members, what they received and what they got in life. You know, it's unfair. Yeah, well. <laughs> Quashu to Saku, one canines way A and B, ka A and S. Kanahoe has to tow us a goo. Wush yash ye duck, wush yash ye dash, uti ye awa, kakusti ye, yah. Has our satin, one canines. Ako at a carch, tesh has to tow a school thing, get has to hit ye de has. Utu Adi Ye away, Kunahoe a dati has she would name. A gate the way you has out to the attic. You has out the attic. Has to two should seem. Haji Yesaya has a ya would lock to. One canines coa. Hag you a tongue ye, a knock has woo art. Chalk. Gwashkiwe a a tina khas ya tiin. Ya yi dat koa. A ka 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 khtu shi. Ya ha yu khatangi. Ye a wa ha ye jane yi. Cha ye su a ha tu wa sa gu. Ya ha tlat ki khak a ya. A tu dey li. A ka a we ha tu wa sa gu tsu. Kikuchetzin, one canin sagu kaji dekahiti, ya ha yu katangi teen. Ye awa ha ye jenei that gunchish. Ah, uh, one canins is sometimes. If you're from, uh, if you're an inland speaker, you might say, wa ye ti ye ye, and it does the same thing. One canins, sometimes. There's a couple other ways I've heard it said. Can't, I can't think of him right now. I've got a friend who says it a little bit different. Um, yeah, so I was in Petersburg a couple of days ago, actually yesterday. And, and while we were in Petersburg, we were talking about Elizabeth Parachovich because she was born there. Uh, tomorrow I'll go to Anchorage and I'll be at a thing talking with a group of folks who work on Molly of Denali about the Molly of Denali episode about Elizabeth Parachovich as well. 
And uh, they spoke with such courage to really try and change things, especially uh, people being treated differently because of who they are, not able to buy houses and not able, not wanting to be in certain neighborhoods. And it's just really interesting to tell indigenous peoples you don't want them in certain neighborhoods because there's a whole lot of history behind that. Uh, and they were just, they really stood up to a lot of things. They really won a lot of things for us today so that we can have a better collective life. I think it's improved spaces to have less hatred in them generally. But they also, the Alaska Native Brotherhood and Sisterhood, sometimes left our language behind. And maybe that's something they had to do in order to achieve a more equitable world. So our work is to go back and to look for that thing that they left behind, those things that they, it's like they set down a, a, a baby or something and we got to go pick that baby up and really take care of it. So that's, that's a lot of our work in, in our attempts to continue to push for equity. And uh, we'll, we'll go to break on a cliffhanger. Stay tuned because I think there's some big exciting announcements coming as far as Alaska Native Language courses at UAS. We're not there yet, but we're really close, so exciting times. Maybe maybe Thursday I'll have an announcement. Maybe next week. We'll see. Okay, anything before we go to break? On air. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Elizabeth Paradovich of Sitin. Una A and B convention of our IABT. The cut Uhana Utasiku to Sai Tesqua Utasaku Adakas Uat Roy Roy President. And, and uh, President Anas to take away a shoot to a tutti on the Katkati no you are a tongue a a jetki. And uh, uh, the movies the Tetra do shock she was very, very friendly, always smiling and willing to talk to everybody. I, I, what I said was I saw her when I was a little girl in Huna and uh, she uh, we, we knew about her before she even got there. So we were all congregated to see her. She came among us and began to just talk to us. And, uh, and I'm sorry that the movies that were made about her presented her as a very stoic kind of uh, st stature <laughs> that she had. And uh, uh, I didn't feel that was a real good representative of, of her real personality. Yeah. <laughs> Hain Ta with Utusiku Utusaku and um 
was a has a T Roy called Elizabeth. That they were very both very friendly and we used to talk about them about how friendly they were. So I just wanted to pass that on because when you look at pictures, other pictures of her, then the portrait that is usually portrayed. Uh, she has big dimples and a big smile always with everybody. I was teaching one time in Sitka and we did a community language class and we really tried to laugh and have fun and someone came up to me afterwards and I'll, I'll give her some slack because I think she was really getting up there in age and maybe was forgetting a lot of things and sometimes people's filters get a little blurry. But she was a great shawat and she came up and she said, that was really wonderful. I, I didn't even realize white people could learn, were allowed to learn Tlingit. And I said, oh yeah, everybody can and should. It's, it'll be really great. And she said, and it was funny. I didn't even know Tlingit people laughed. <laughs> 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 they didn't know what to say. So I said, oh yeah, we, we laugh all the time, but uh, maybe you saw- We laugh at each other so much. Right? I said, I guess maybe sometimes when people are stealing all our stuff, it's not very funny, but we're still over here telling jokes, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Johan, good as cheese. And yeah, thank you for telling us about her personality as well. I think that does get lost in some, because we see photographs or images or when they're, you know, sometimes going to battle. Closing. Right, and you got to get yourself psyched up to go defeat someone intellectually, but outside of that, I heard lots of things about her warmth and humor and joy and love, and got to read a letter she wrote to her children when she was sick, and it was very heartfelt and touching about being brave and encouraging her children to keep going. I love the fact that she took her knitting everywhere. Mm. So that's what I do now, I, because I can't see. Um, uh, one of the things I can do yet is knit, so I, I'm always knitting. Goodness, cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, take five. We'll come back and do back to the Raven story. Cajun win it. So we are looking at this story. It's called Yesh Ka Khan. We've gotten five pages in on a 16 page story. So we're making good progress. We're using this exercise to practice reading sentences and Shingit and looking things up that we're not sure about. This is a mashup. It's a collection of three versions of the same story told by Kas Gi. Susie James, who was Chukansha, Keet Yanayi, who was Chukanadi, um, and Shah Dong, Robert Zuboff, who was Kakwedi, uh, Keet Yanayi was Willie Marks. And so uh, this is the story of Raven and Fire. So I'll do the recap. Uh, and we're going through, and I'm kind of highlighting in green these words that have to do with direction and location. That's still kind of a focus area for us, and we're going to start shifting our attention to verbs, even though we've been on verbs for, for a long time now. Ya'an qasaku itdakh away after this flood. Tesheya da sa'a iti wuti singit ani kok. There was nothing remaining on the world. Chastakatat kwa akaye wuti. But every single thing was on it. Yakan, Kesh Ayakan, Atuye Utiin Yaas Kayawask. This fire, there used to be no fire inside the trees and the bushes. Kesh Dasa Ach Aku gone. Nothing burned at that time. Kunach Kushachet Shan Achu Ayakah Datin Wetakai. 
It is really dangerous when it's stormy at that rocky point. He flew there. When he finished flying, he's catching his breath just there. Only after a long time did he start to go. What's that strange thing way over there? It can be seen way out to sea. It's bursting up that fire. Right now that fire burning out to sea, he wants it to come to shore, come ashore. Away to hate at hunt a good. Nay, you take he take shake dark it, the keen you can achi nachian yes a yak. So too he goes up to the ones by him. Hey, maybe fly out to sea and bring me that fire. Khan ayu, you take he nach cake a gunch. That fire bursting up out at sea. Hada, kesh a day. Not even, no way. Keshach to wa ushkut you in this cage. I don't want to. People keep telling him. Uh, just one more thing. Uh, this is right after Raven defeated his uncle. His uncle flooded the world. Raven stuck his beak in the sky and swung around there for a long time. Wished for Kaja, a kelp island, so he could land on it. He landed on it. Then he rebuilt the world with this sea otter. And then he went to go rest out on the Aleutians, which is the last thing he built. And this is where he sees this, what I think is a volcano. And he's trying to convince all these birds to fly out there and bring it back to him. That gets us here. And does anyone want to read the first sentence? So read up to the period, and we'll just go through the sentence and start finding things and putting it together. Now, what do we recognize in this sentence? To that place he went. Well, yeah, so he went. And then, but right before it, we get the direction. So where did he go? He went something hunt uagut. Hunt is to be. It is to be. Hun is to be with someone. Yeah. So you should, would say to. Blank, and what is akuk? Might need to go to the dictionary for that one. So we'll go to the dictionary. And we're going to turn on our table of contents, make this bigger. We're going to look for the ejective K. And we're looking for a high tone A with a KW. And we get KAK. This, uh, there might be some folks who think otherwise, I believe that Uk is a little owl that is called a barred owl. It is a very powerful creature. Uh, it's connected to the kushta. I believe it also has four different names. Uh, I was told by uh, a speaker that that's what they're called because that's what they say to people, which is, uh, y'all sit in the woods. It's also called Askatuyik uh, magic in the woods. And it's also called Kushta Yegi, which is the land otter's spirit helper. It's based on stories told to me by some elders. 
this is also the you don't want to mess with this one at all. Uh, there's stories about people who have hurt these animals and then they kind of went crazy themselves. So very powerful, and that's what we have here. Uh, in this case, the first time we hear about it, it has this little K on it, which means it's an extra tiny one. So we're going to say to this little owl. Oh. Maybe we'll capitalize it because it's like a character. What about Wananesawe or Wananesawe? We'll hear it either way. Nane is the root of it, is, and I don't have a clue what that means. Yeah, this is a phrase. Uh, let's see, I probably have got it in here. Let me let me double check, make sure I have it in the dictionary so we can look it up. Okay, I do. So this is a phrase that is in the dictionary. Uh, it is a really good one to know. One uh, nanis away, one nanis away. One niece away, you'll, you'll hear it a few different ways, and it really means at some point. So in, in, in terms of like making a narrative, this is how you jump forward in the story, right? And so uh, in English, you would do this with a whole bunch of, you would sometimes say at some point, or you'd say sometime later, or, you know, it's just sort of flashing us forward into another scene in the same story. So whenever you see it or hear it, just sort of jump ahead, but also just learn how to start using this, like saying this thing happened, then at some point this other thing. In terms of translation, you could say at some point. And there are a few of these things where, it, yes, these things do mean things individually, but once you put them together in the context of storytelling, this, it's all about like what they do to the story, I think. Okay. Here's the next sentence, lines two and three on this slide. Can I get a reader? Shugunach yak ak. Gunchish. And what do we have? This owl, their beak. If you speak Tlingit enough, you'll start calling beaks noses all the time. It's uh -huh. the same word in Tlingit. We come back to this owl. So that leaves us looking for these parts, yeah? Um, what you want to look up first? The first one? Yeah, yet. Has nothing to do with school, does it? I know it's not schoon, but it just looks like it. Ah, okay. Shukunach. Let's look at that one first, and then, then we'll get to this one. So for this one, we're going to go into the dictionary again. We'll go to SH, scroll on down. It wasn't sugar, like shuga. Shuga is sugar. Oh, so cute. So here's shugu, first or initial. Shugunach. At first, originally, in the beginning. So we'll go back to the story and we'll just sort of make notes. This owl, their beak, dot, 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 originally. And we, you know, we might adjust that as we come back and we see what the yayat is. And uh, I have a feeling it's a verb. So there's no, there's no verbs in this whole thing. So when we get to it, like, well, there's the ya in front of it. Maybe that's the classifier. 
So we're going to go look up yacht and see if we find anything. Which means I should have the verb dictionary open, which I don't know if I do. Yeah, it is long. Yeah, So if I'm looking up a Y-A-A -A verb, I'm going to go to the next letter down, W, and scroll up since the A vowels are the last ones that they list. And here's yayat to be long. And we can, you know, since it's a new verb, just getting in the practice, once we find it, we go look it up in English. So we'll go down here, and we see, oops, scan got a little messed up. So we see wusani yayat, the spear is long. Kaz yayat, the stick is long. Okay, so now we, and that is stick-like objects, so that would count. A beak would count as a stick-like object. So you also have rope, general objects, time. So coming back. So how would that chliyat uh, be used? Is it, I mentioned is as general. Uh huh. So here we see uh, hair and a pole. So uh, it also. For me, chliyat is also tall. We are the the tree is tall, and then yayat is like a stick-like kind of a thing, like a beak. Hmm. Okay. So we might, and so like as far as like a translation process, sometimes you are sort of like, you know, I usually will go through and sort of find the things and then I'll, I might rewrite this. So like I might say, this owl, their beak originally was long, right? So even though you know, and so we see like what Tlingit does sometimes in terms of like moving from, this is imperfective, but it, it doesn't, you know, just in terms of like the flexibility of time and how the verb modes work, it's really interesting. And so you could also say, uh, you know, you can mess around with that some more if you wanted to. How about this one? Can someone read that? Oh. And what do we got? Probably a verb. Looking up the nay part. So like we really, we get good at spotting a verb. And we're like, boy, that sure looks like a verb to me. And then we see there's da, there's a zero classifier, and there's ne, to do, to perform. And we'll go look up this one too. So here is uh, something. Sani, and so ni could be ne. Those are interchangeable dialect things. Southern Tlingit, Teslin, you're going to get ni. Uh, Northern Tlingit, you're going to get ne. And this is to cause something or fix it to happen. So ye at sani, and this is not the one we're looking for, but this is, this is the verb for doing it, generic do it. So, uh, and then, but this one, this, this is a verb that switches. If you have an imperfective version of it, it will switch to this verb. 
So you do have a, a couple verbs, like we were talking earlier in class about how some of them don't have an imperfective, but there are some that will actually change to a slightly different verb in the imperfective. So this is one, same with this one, like if you were saying, uh, I'm working on it, once you were done working on it, it would switch to this S class of like a whole different verb. There's not very many that do that. Then we'll just sort of see, they no longer do trapping, they are too lazy. There's that more than. So is a singular thing, which means just way too much of it. Whatever their father does, they do as well. This is a really good verb for like working on fish, working on meat, work, working on something right now. Uh, and so that's what we've got. So coming back, how would you translate that in the context of this story? I would say that's what he did, except he, there's not an action in this. It's describing a beat. Or maybe it's preparation for the part that follows. I don't know. Yeah, so we have. Isn't the owl going to fly out there? Isn't he, is the owl agreeing to fly out there? Is that what he did? So in this case, we haven't seen a CH pop up on the owl. So it's still going to be raven. And I would probably say he's he's working on it. And like that's literally what the, the sentence is. And so we can leave it for now and then sort of keep going. And then maybe come, maybe the next one will cue us in. And we might not have to change it. We might just say he's he's working on it. And this and this will provide clarification. Is he working on convincing the skuk to go out there? Is he working on getting him ready? Uh, and so the next sentence will tell us. But as far as like, ye a dene, that only tells us like, they are working on it. So if, where would the ch be in, to make it refer to the owl? Uh, so it would, you would have it right here. Yeah. So if that was there, then uh, my brain would say, okay, now the owl is working on it. But in, if that doesn't happen, even if you named 10 different things, we're still talking about Raven. Which is why we're doing he. It could be they. Like in, in this sentence, it is they. But when you get into the work of translation, sometimes you start making some different decisions. Uh, and, and Raven is male in the stories. We know that because there are stories where he dresses as a female and they specifically bring it up so. okay might be last one we'll see if we can get one more after this i get a reader cook not two You you assured a way a cow the hut where teach ku Cheesh. And what do we got here? Is that over there? Over there to the nose or to the beak. Yeah, and with uh, we're gonna translate uh as it's. And technically it's uh for non-human things, which gets a little blurry in stories because they they are kind of like people. There is also 
a few different body parts like sh and y and sh that are going to be exceptions to the short vowel going long rule. They, they just tend to do that. It, it seems to be specifically with some of these body parts. So ya de should stay high, sha de should stay high. So sha de, ya de, shu de. It's just another chapter from the book of exceptions. Then this, we might have some stuff to look up here. Is that hot for resemble? That's a, good, that's a good, that's a good uh, prediction. We'll go look it up. We'll go. We might have some options for. And so, before we look it up, we say, okay, what? Am, and in terms of predicting what we might be looking for, we're probably looking for a k. We're probably looking for an s classifier, which I think they have a s. And then we're going to look for a root with hot. So these are the types of things we're looking for when we go look this up. And we, we sort of see that there's the ka, there's the classifier. So they don't put any of the, you know, the object wouldn't be on there. The perfective marker wouldn't be on there. And this is one that would be a kamsihat for our inland speakers. So we'll go look up khat and see what we can find. I think I found it. Ooh, okay. Connector attach. So yeah, and so we see here there is one for resemble, uh, but that's probably not. So when we see this, there nobody can do that. So that's one when it says st, that means there's only an object. When it says tr, there's an object end. So now we got. Tighten or pull, but then we see this A with a dash. This is how they would have written. Today we're writing this as uh, in Carrie's dictionary and in her database, she's probably writing P day towards P. We're sort of moving it to say, let's just say N, noun, and then sometimes there'll be a suffix there like day or something like that. Uh, so to tie up or to connect. So we're going to do a couple of things before we go. We're going to look up connect in English, then we'll look this verb up in the database, and then we'll come back and write our English, and then we'll be done with this slide. One more down. So under connect, we go down and we see let's see right here. So we've got plug in. That's not what we're looking for. That's the verb to poke something. Uh, tsu, this is for multiple stick-like objects to be moving. And then here, kahis adeksehat. The wire is connected up with it. Yade kautusehat. We connected it, tied it up to this. Uh, okay. Uh, and you, when you see the perfective, like in this case, we could tell like that's a zero, kautusahat, and we'll look at that later. For now, the last thing we'll look at before we come back to translate is, we'll see if it's in here. We'll go down and look for hot. Oops, there's hot. To connect it to or tie, and this has day on there, n day. So we're going to go down here and we see a day kausahat. It was tied there. Oh, this is not the right one. It's this one because it has an object, right? It has to have the object because we see a kausahat. A day a kausahat. They tied it there confirms it and we can also now we can sort of learn this verb more adiksahat tie it there and we'll go back here whoops uh, and I'll tell you, anybody know that we're out of time I can give it to you it's two things itch it is uh, yeah and we're talking about this in a different class about totally different things but taste is 
pitch wood. So it is pitch, but when it's been dried completely, usually by the sun, and it could also be a torch. So over there to its beak, he tied it that pitch wood. And so the kua in this case, I wouldn't even translate. It doesn't really mean therefore or something like that. It's just pointing towards what we're talking about. It's saying that's what he tied to the beak. Then we could go through and, you know, I might say there, there to its beak, he tied it, that pitch wood. And, you know, it's up to you folks how you ultimately, like say you get into translation work and you start getting something ready for publication. Some people might say, Raven tied pitch wood to its beak there. But it's kind of, that'll be your decision when it comes to your time to be the next Tlingit translator who's putting books out. Mm -hmm. ah. Does yup refer to the length of the beak? No, it's just, I think it's just saying over there, like, um, and it's sometimes it's used for time, and, but sometimes maybe, maybe he's going way down to the end of the beak, you know, it's possible. But usually it's kind of over yonder, so. Okay. We will see you folks on Thursday. Are we going to class on Thursday? Because last week you said we might not.